All right, uh, great day in Timmins Arena, just all the way around. Uh, incredible atmosphere, and um, I think that's what probably our fifth game, close to capacity this year. And you know, just you look up during the national anthem, and there's, there's really there's really no room around in the place. And um, you know, great great to be at honor Slauson before the game, uh, to have him here during the All Star break was just you know tremendous. And um, you know, he came to team meeting this morning and uh, spoke to the team and. I got to spend some time with him. He came over to the house for a little bit when I went on my way home to get my clothes, rode with me and you know, and then we were able to honor him, you know, before the game and you know, just just everything he stood for and you know, the fact that he bleeds purple and wants to come back to Furman on his uh on his trip, you know, during his All-Star break was pretty was pretty incredible. And um, you know, that's that's what we do, what we do. You know, my my son Mac had an opportunity to go to the beach. They've got their winter break. I mean, you got more breaks in school now than ever. I mean, when I was a kid, you, you had winter break. I think they invented spring break whenever I was kind of going in middle school. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then, and then, uh, and then now we then we got fall break. Well, now they got another winter break. You know, for for a weekend. And his friend asked him to go to Folly, and it was going to be Friday to Sunday. Would probably miss a game today. And he was sitting in the kitchen with Jessica on Thursday, beside himself just worried that he was going to miss seeing Slauson. And he was contemplating giving up a beach trip with one of his best friends to see Slauson get his ring and to visit with him. Well, lo and behold, I get a call yesterday from Jessica that says, you're not going to believe what just happened. I guess Slauson rented a beach house at Folly while he was home, and Mac randomly runs into him in Charleston. And then Sloss coming up to the game. So Slauson picks up my 11-year-old this morning at 6.30 in the morning, and they ride up here together. And as I was processing all that, and they walk in the team meeting room together, he's got my son. And it just it's just a reminder, like, that that's that's what it's about. You know, that's that's the circle. You know, that's the purpose. That's the brotherhood. And, um, you know, that's why we do what we do. That's, where, that's why we've gotten where we've gotten, you know, and that's what this has been built on. And... I told the team before the game, I brought a ring in there. I said, we're going to honor Slaw tonight. And I really just tried to challenge him to understand the meaning of that ring and the circle of that ring, right? The connection and the everlasting connection of that ring, right? And that there's no edge to it. It just keeps, it just, it's a, it's a, it's a bounded connection, right? And fighting for that circle and what that stands for. Um, understanding like that circle of love, that circle of that ring, if you want a runaway ring, like you, you got to buy into the circle of the ring. And I was just plead, like, not necessarily pleading with him, but just like my whole pregame was just, we have to go out there and we have to win this game on our connection. And I think it's the most connected we've looked all year. You know, I think you, it's it's definitely our best half of basketball that first half all year. Uh, you get to a twenty assist, nine turnover game. That's what we've always proud ourselves on here, twenty and tens. You know, a team that has been turning the ball over too much. All of a sudden, we, we it's 20 and nine tonight. We get to halftime. They tell me 17 deflections. I about pass out. We used to get 30 all the time, right? And this year, we've had a hard. I mean, we've had games without 17, and we get 17 in the first half. And you just feel the spirit, right? You feel the energy, and um, and then to watch JP play with that type of freedom to hit, to watch Mark hit that huge shot when they had some momentum to see Tyrese go get that offensive rebound, to see G play with the spirit that he's playing with, and PJ to play aggressive, and then the bench to come off and give us some great minutes as well. You could just feel the connection. And um, we've been fighting like heck for it. You know, I've, I've never spent this much time having to convince a team how important it is and how vital it is. And it has been hours and hours and hours, I think seven player meetings on Thursday, uh, multiple team meetings. I mean, it's been it's been pouring into – Whatever's going to happen on that court, we're going to be a connected group, and we're going to figure out what we have to do to get connected, and we're going to we're going to work through this. And I give our team a lot of credit. You could feel it in practice Thursday, or I'm sorry, Friday, and you could feel it yesterday. And um, no surprises showed up today. So, really proud of our group. Uh, all of a sudden, I guess we can shoot as well. Forty-two percent from three is what it looks like to me. It's amazing when you have the ball moving like that and you're playing together. How the freedom, the release of not having to make every shot. You can just kind of go play and uh, look like a good ball team. So uh, Chattanooga is really, really good. We know that. Uh, Dan does a great job, and uh, they got a ton of firepower. And um, the way we defended that first half was, was pretty remarkable. Uh, 
uh, coach, it was it was kind of unreal to watch that first half because it was the carbon copy of the t- first meeting. Furman actually made more shots in the first half at Chattanooga than Chattanooga made here today. <laughs> and that's kind of remarkable to think about, but that's this league, right? And um, just uh, along with your defense, you know, Vanderwall gets a start tonight. And I thought the job you did on Trey Bonham before he unfortunately got hurt uh, was superb, that you kind of expect that sometimes for your guys like that. But I think for the second game in a row, that trio of Tyrese, Garrett, and Cooper, have, you can kind of see them getting better each game defensively as a group. And then, you know, I think last game they had no turnovers as well. So both ends of the court. Well, yeah, Trey, Trey and, and, and Huff are, I mean, they're tough. I mean, I watched the Greensboro game. I mean, I mean, Bonham still scoring in that game. I mean, it was amazing. I mean, it was it was an incredible performance. And then Huff goes out there and his. I feel like I think he had nine threes on East Tennessee State. And you know, it's hard because they present so many challenges. You have Alexis; it's a really good post player. You got other shooters out there. Um, they run great stuff. They can space you, and so you know. A lot of times you think, hey, we gotta we gotta try to not get two on the ball, you know, because we gotta guard all this space and we gotta guard all this skill. Uh, but it's funny, we we kind of went back when they were young guys at VMI and they had Jake out there. Uh, we we lost to them up there and we played kind of a little bit of a softer, you know, drop just to try to stay one on one. And they beat us and then they came here and we we said, hey, you know what? Like we've got to try to affect these two guards and I'm not sure what's gonna happen around it but we can't let these guys get as comfortable as they played against us and so we decided to get out and hedge them and um you know i thought it was i thought it was effective you know i mean at, at that point you know you're going to have some slip vulnerability and they're going to be able to throw it in a little easier uh, but but at least you got these guys that are just very dynamic players you know you're just saying hey at the end of the day like we can't let you play in this much space and we got to commit a second defender to you it's a hard covers to play um, you know, not as many people are playing that coverage anymore with the space and the shooting. And so, you know, you're having to figure out, like, hey, you're going to give up something doing this. But it was definitely the right move. And um, we just thought at the end of the day, like, Zeta can shoot, Alexis can shoot, Alexis can post. They got other guys that can shoot. Um, but we, we had to make sure that we didn't let those two guards beat us. And, um, you know, that was a credit to our guys because, again, at the end of the day, like, you got to really be willing to fly around and be able to play that coverage. Um, to that point, defensively, I thought as big as the job you did on, on Bonham and uh, Huff in the first half was what you were able to do on Alexis because I think a lot of, of what they do is predicated on um, that guy being a facilitator, uh, just like Jake Stevens uh, and their ability to pass. A lot of their efficiency comes out of passing out of the post back out, um, and you guys – didn't seem to let that happen a lot. Can you just talk about how you were able to slow that down uh, in the first half? You just got to keep the ball out. You know, I mean, it's a hard thing to do. He's really good. Uh, he got going out right out of after ta- after halftime. And, um, you know, but I thought G did a really good job in the first half. You know, I mean, you're asking a guy to go hedge a ball screen and then get back and basically front a post player. Like, that, it's, it's hard, you know. And, I thought G did a pretty good job. I thought we got a little bit um, complacent and letting him catch a little bit too easily in that second half. And then and then we kind of got it short up a little bit. And I thought Tyrese came out and gave us some good minutes of the five when Garrett got in foul trouble and did a good job, you know, trying to keep the ball out. But it's always been, you know, the, the philosophy around here when you when you play really good post players, like you have to limit their touches. And, um, you know, if he catches it down there and he's got – Three, four shooters around him. Like good luck, Dublin. You know what I mean. So, you you got to you got to kind of pick your poison a little bit. And um, you know, we we started sending a helper down there once he got going and scored those points in a row. And um, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, you're again once you do something, there's a cost to everything. So, you can go send a second defender at him. Well, they're going to be four on three on the edges. And um, you know, it's one of the leading three point shooter teams in the country. So you got to be careful. Coach, um, obviously you had a big, you built a big lead in the first half, and then uh, you got kind of inexplicable technical fouls from your two leaders, 
and things can really go south in a hurry in basketball. Like when you're facing a team that can shoot the three like Chattanooga can shoot, what was the key to maintaining the composure? And I guess if any two are going to get them, you want those two guys who exemplify composure and senior leadership to yeah, bounce I mean, back from it. I, I would rather just, you know, I'll talk to the – I mean, obviously wasn't a huge fan of the second tech. Um, you know, the explanation I got for it and things that were taking place in the game – um, you know, I've got to make sure my guys aren't saying anything, you know, to those guys. Uh, but there was a lot of chirping going on, and they were both talking to each other. And you know, it's just one of those unfortunate situations that you gotta you gotta calm Marcus down. You gotta work through it. And you know, JP, he doesn't need to say anything to their bench once he hits a shot. Like, you know, the the, the ref didn't know what he said. He just saw that he looked at their bench. And um, you know, I don't I don't know what he said. Um, I know what he told me he said, you know, but they decided to hit text on him, you know, and so um, we got to deal with that as it comes. And, um, you know, you got to get your players to respond what they can respond to. And the thing that was hard about it is it put the second foul on both of them, you know, and so now you got to come into the second half and you got your two best players. And if they get one early, now they got three and you got to manage that. And um, look, if our players do something that deserves a tech, then, then whack them. I'm all for it. And, um, but, you know, details I'm not going to go into. There was, there was other things going on that, you know, I, I alerted the refs and I thought they did a really good job handling the second <laughs> half. And, look, those, those guys are really good. I mean, I mean Jerry Heater is a, a high-level ACC official. He actually had our Virginia game. And I've known Jerry since I was an assistant of the Big South. He's, an, he's a great official. He's a great person. Uh, Jeremy Moser I've known forever. You know, we, we actually have, you know, I mean, again, he's, he's refed our scrimmages, ref games. He's a great official. So it's just one of those deals where – you know, I think emotions were high. I think there was some chirping going on. And at the end of the day, the best thing you can do is to just rise above all that, right? And I think at the end of the day, that's that's what I want my teams doing is regardless of what they're doing, bring the attention to me, let me deal with it with the refs, and then and then, and then then we stay out of some of that stuff. And Because um, we did. We gave them four points right there. I mean, we're up 23 at half without that. And, um, you know, it's just kind of momentum plays, you know, and, and – We've got to we've got to be able to just calm down and um, you know make sure we stay out of those situations. Um, Coach, if you look at uh, what PJ Smith did today, I thought offensively he was aggressive, but there there was one particular transition in, in the first half. I think he he may have tipped the ball away, but he ended up getting the three in transition. Um, can you just talk about you know really on both ends today? I thought he he was aggressive and a lot of those catches and he he was coming into his shot when he when he got a lot of those threes and looks today can you just talk about his play yeah you know one thing i love about pj is you know you never have to worry about his attitude you know his mentality to team and his willingness to fight and um you know look the way i i've run this program in seven years is we're going to have values and we're going to be we're going to love these players with a deep care and we're going to have a standard that's extremely high and we know that they're going to navigate hard things and we're going to be right there with them as they navigate it and um you know pj had to navigate hard you know like nobody talks about it he got taken out of the starting lineup you know 10 games ago or so and he didn't bring attention to it. He didn't make a big deal of it. He just said, hey, whatever I got to do, I got to come off the bench. This is what I have to do. And he just kept getting better, you know, and he just kept kept his spirit on what his spirit needed to be kept on and, you know, didn't really try to, you know, blame or criticize or defend himself. Just, hey, I just want to pour into the team. or whatever, Coach, whatever you need me to do, like I'm willing to do it. And, you know, so we reinserted him into the lineup three games ago. And, um, you know, you can see he's just really – He's getting to his best self. You know, he's out there smiling. He's out there. He's confident, right? I mean, I'm just begging him to get the ball in there whenever he can. And um, But his defense is really what's been incredible. I mean, he forced some tough shots tonight. I mean, those guys were trying to drive him, and uh, they, they they weren't getting much on him. And, you know, I think that's that's been a huge deal for us. And he's a ball mover. He's a connector, and he can make, he can make shots. And, um, you know, you can, st- you can tell his confidence is definitely growing. Coach, you mentioned the other day that, um, you know, you were glad, always glad to see, I think, uh, JP had eight assists, Carter at seven the other day, but maybe more spread out. Today you get 20, Carter's got four, three other guys have three, 
the other guys have two. Classic for my basketball, right? Yeah, it's always better when it's more spread out like that because it just it just shows you the ball's moving, right? Like when it's more consolidated just to your point guards, then they're moving it. But is it moving free around it? And um, you know that that's where you. I mean, it looks like basically every player had an assist tonight except one, and that was Cooper. But Cooper had eight points on three shots, you know, because he was a recipient of a lot of those dunks and assists. But everybody got one, you know, and you look at it, we had one, two, three, four guys with three or more, right? Ben has three, PJ has three, JP has three, Carter has four. And that just shows you the ball's moving, right? The, the go-to guy's the open guy. And uh, we're just, we're just, we're seeking the open guy. And uh, we're playing with one another, the ball's moving, we're cutting. And I thought we had a, a lot of really good possessions like that tonight. And that's always going to put us in a successful situation. Um, coach, when you sit around and you kind of look at and see some of the results around the league, for both these teams really coming into this game today, they, there's a lot still in front of you to play for going towards Asheville. How much of a maybe of a motivating factor was, you know, subconsciously maybe – would that be to to see some of those results and you know just kind of be in the standalone game today? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we always want to be an inside out program. You know, we we have enough to focus on here. You know, we 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 know what we have to get better at. It's really clear when we're at our best. You know, it's funny. You, you compare. We now we've won three in a row. You go back to the five game win streak early. You know what's really encouraging about today during the five game win streak our offense really wasn't any different than it's been you know through the socon play it's our defense that's that was 0.2 points per possession better well tonight we were a 1.25 on offense which is elite i mean we've been floating around 1.06 in league play and so our defense is a 0 0.90 which is incredible versus an offense like that but my point is it's like this team has been really good defensively at times, and the offense has been fine, and it's been good enough to win some games. I think this team getting the best is more nice. Like tonight, you got a real 20-10 and 10 game. You're shooting 40% from three. You got four guys with three or more assists. Now the ball's moving, and we're defending. And I think that's the difference um, tonight, right, is like you saw a better, you saw a better production offensively, and not just the ball going in, but just the movement. And, um, you know, I think that's really, really key for us. And, you know, if we can if we can chase – we're just trying to chase quality. Like, just, we're just trying to chase quality. We're trying to be quality teammates. Uh, we're, trying to, we're trying to chase quality possessions defensively, and we're trying to chase quality possessions offensively. And um, when we do that well, we're a really good team. And, you know, look, there's a lot of really good teams in this league. You know, I mean, anybody can beat you in this league on any given night. And, and every game stands on their own two feet. And um, we got enough to focus on in here to continue to seek our best. And, you know, it's, it's John Wooden, right? Like, focus, focus on your team. You know, focus on your team. Focus on getting your team better. And, you know, don't, don't get caught up in everything else around it uh, because we just – we have enough to worry about internally. And, you know, I'm just I'm, – at this point, I'm just really proud of our guys. I've, I've made them look at a lot square, you know, and, 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 and give them credit. They've looked at it square. And, and they've made a decision they want to get better at it and they want to play more connected. And there's just been a greater effort, you know, early in the year. It was more so, hey, we are close, you know, we are playing connected. And, you know, we've, we've worked through it and we've walked through it. And um, to see that we don't have any bad people in our program, you know. But sometimes it's hard to just decide, like, hey, I want it to all be about making somebody else better and really dying to self and just saying, hey, this is going to be for the program. And, and making that decision, right, is hard. And, you know, I think it's, it's something that we're going to have to continue to fight in college basketball every single day of where this is going. But, you know, we don't want to be long warriors. You know, like we, we want to we be connected people that understand that we're best when we're a group. And, um, you know, long warriors, man, those guys, it just it's never quenching. You know, you never, you never get to the real purpose and the real joy of what you're playing for. And, um, you know, I'm just proud of our guys for really doing what they got to do to get there. Coach, there's playing hard, and then there's playing Ben Vanderwall with a hard. Um, is it hard almost to – I mean, he earned the start tonight. But you have that kind of spark you can bring off the bench. Is it hard to put him in the starting lineup because you know you're going to get that kind of effort if you bring him off the bench? I, 
that's a goofy question. I'm, I apologize, but <laughs> nah, I mean he's earned it, and um, looks like he was leading rebounder tonight. Nine points, three assists, plus twenty seven. I mean JP's a plus thirty one, and Ben Vanderwall's a plus twenty seven. Yeah, I mean they're the two sitting at the, the the women's game on Thursday night together. It's funny how that works. Um, Ben's a warrior, man. But Ben just – he cares about all the things we've discussed the last 10 minutes. And um, he's sacrificial, right? Like, he's willing to do hard, right? And he's willing, to, he's willing to chase energy. And, you know, he's somebody that – he's he's had to deal with his own sets of adversity and growing up and as a sophomore and role changing and appendix out and not shooting the ball how he wanted to shoot the ball. And he just – he just fought. I mean, every single day, just I just just keeps responding correctly. And um, you know, I told our staff after the game in the coaches' locker room, I want I would love to know our record when we play in twenty minutes or more. And um, it's good, probably gonna make me look like an idiot, to be honest with you. But I want to see it, you know. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe my gut's wrong. But I think when he's out there, things that things that affect winning take place. And sometimes you don't always know what that is, but like, it's just those plays that just he just lays he just lays it on the line, and he's gonna cut, he's gonna chase the offensive rebound, he's gonna dive for a ball, he's gonna do some things defensively, and he just does the right thing, and he does it with a smile on his face, and you know you can see today like there was a little bit more energy in our celebrations, there was a little bit more pop to us, and I think, you know. I've always said this before, like if you wanna if you wanna have connection, like have personality. You know, like hey, like text four of your friends tonight and say, Let's go hang out and y'all go to a restaurant and y'all five sit there and get on your phones and don't talk to each other. Like, are you gonna leave there and be like, Man, that was a really good time? You know, like that was really connected. You know, or hey, let's go talk about this. Let's I mean, I'm I'm texting with some of my close friends, you know, Paul Foster and John Warren and Reagan and Court like, hey, where are we celebrating? Like, I don't think I'm going to go over there tonight and just sit there. Like, I'm going to talk and I'm going to have personality and we're going to care about one another and we're going to talk about the game. And, like, you're going you're gonna to lift up somebody and you're going to enjoy that relationship. And I think then you're going to leave there and be like, you know what, that, that was enriching. And I think that's what Ben has really shown in this time is like, hey, he's really shown, like, getting outside of his personality and trying to be a great teammate. And you can see it. Like, he's bringing, he's bringing like, I mean, the reactions and the, the emotions, like, we need that. That's how I'm wired. Like, like I miss that. Like, I, I love Slaw's ability. I miss, I miss his emotion. You know, like I miss him. I miss Mike Bothwell's personality. You know, like, and now tonight you're seeing like, you know, I mean, you think about Jordan Lyons and just and like tonight I felt we had some of that, right? And JP like play just look free, right? Like Marcus is out there and he bangs that three. You like G's out there like do because it looked like they were having a good time, and um, you know. I think Ben's brought some of that, and um, you know I got to keep starting him. I mean that's just that's clear as day right now, and um, you know we just got to trust. We got to trust what we feel like impacts winning the most, and um, you know the biggest the biggest farce in our game is the biggest illusion in our game is thinking that you're going to be able to win on talent alone, and um, never has happened, never will happen, and you got to buy into it and. Um, you know, well, I'm just I'm 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 glad that our group chose to do that today, and and um, we got to keep we got to keep chasing that ring. Quick word on going to Stanford. Quick word on going to Stanford Wednesday. And yeah, I mean, fun games. I mean, Bucky's done an incredible job with that group, and um, you know, going down there, you know, it's going to be a great environment. You know, they're going to have a great crowd, and um, Bucky does a really good job. So we're excited about the opportunity. We're excited about the challenge. I think it's going to continue to show the quality of our league. And, um, you know, that game today on national TV continues to show the quality of our league. And um, this is a really, really good league. And, and we got a lot of good coaches and a lot of good programs. And, um, you know, we got four games left in the regular season. We're going to take them one at a time and just continue to try to get to us. Thank you all.